Let's start. Yes, we are a monitor Tom, and uh, we're going to make a website today. It's, it's a bit a trip down memory lane. Uh, who are we? We are two webmasters, and as you can see, it's 1999. We are, uh, well, he is 26 years old, I'm 21 years old at the time, and um, we're going to dive back into the good times and find out how websites were built in 1999. And you might even learn uh, something from it. Uh, at least we will reflect on these old times and find out what we have achieved so far. Um, but let's find out if we are the only uh, dinosaurs here. Um, and I want to see some hands. Um, you might be old with, um, let's start, had an ICQ account. Ooh. Everybody's old. Okay, perfect. You might be old with, you were in two hours or four and in absolute hour. Everybody, everybody. Old. Okay, you might be old here. Access to web via dialogue. Wow, wow. I'm, I'm feeling very comfortable today. Next one. You might go with Yusuf Y2K. Yeah, otherwise, you wouldn't be here, right? Yeah, maybe they're a little more faster, Y2K. Yeah. And you might be old if you know what a zip drive is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And last one, you might go old if you. Pots on knives. <laughs> hey. All right. I'm going to give you two about it. Here's some really good information you on, on the 1999. And we're going to build a website from scratch and um, pay good attention and you know how it's done. Okay. Uh, when we uh, made a website back in 1999, we started with an uh, under construction page. So, uh, well, this is the, 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 the base of the HTML page. As you can see, we're using HTML4, which was released in 1997. And why everything is uppercase? Well, we listen to Haber and jungle music, so we were a bit deaf and everything had to be loud. <laughs> what does it look like? Well, no, it doesn't look like much. What we're going to do is we're going to set some background colors. As you can see, we put it all on the body tag, because, well, we heard about this new thing called CSS, but why change a winning team, so. You also notice we added the background GIF, GIF? GIF, what? GIF? I always GIF. say GIF. It's GIF. Yeah. I always say GIF, so let's, let's, let's keep it at GIF. Uh, what, what I added as a background was a pretty cool uh, star. That's what we did back in the, back in the days. Um, well, this site is currently under uh, construction, and now we have a cool ca canvas. Uh, we add a little bit of a uh, message, and maybe we can add some energy uh, with it with a marquee, so the text scrolls by. Pretty cool. Let's see what that looks like. Yes. <laughs> Pretty aw awesome, if you ask me. Well, what we really want is to center the text. Everything had to be centered back in the day. And we also, as you can see, added a nice cool border uh, across the image. And for that we need tables. Tables are pretty cool. We do everything with tables. And just to be sure, we add another uh, GIF to inform the users uh, that we're still under construction. And that looks something like this. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay. And we also promised some reflection, so I'm, I'm going to talk a, a little bit about what happened in 1999. And I, well, you mentioned that you are all old, so you should uh, be familiar with it. But of course, in 1999, we had the dot com bubble. Um, stock market too high on the uh, internet bubble and internet companies rising in value, but finally exploding in 2000. Um, also, um, Google was already there. And even started his first very smart AdWords program in 1999, leaving all players like Alta Vista, you see it in the, in the left below, behind Google was really the place to be at the time. Um, there was also, also this, this thing called Napster, peer to peer, uh, sharing downloaded files on multiple servers so you could more easily share uh, music. And the band Metallica, you see them on the picture, uh, they didn't like it. And they sued Napster instead of making good records. And, and um, well, uh, I think to this day everybody a little bit uh, hates Metallica for doing that. 
In um, Night Night Night, also this platform was launched, maybe no blogger, uh, it was one of the first platforms which were which you were able to, to make uh, timestamp blogs, and they pioneered the name blog as well, which is still used today. Um, blogger still exists, and it's owned by Google nowadays, it still is a free service um, to date. Um, I don't like to make me mention it earlier. Um, everybody was afraid of the millennium bug um, that would drive all computers crazy when it would hit, uh, when it would hit the year 2000. Um, it, it didn't happen. You can see it in the news from January 1st saying, well, nothing happened. Okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, you might not even know it, but 25 years ago, the first accessibility guidelines were launched. 25 years ago. Okay, more than later. Back to now, I think, because we were, no, we were not using Microsoft front page. It's an illustration of a program which you can use to build websites. We were using Microsoft Media Dreamweaver. And uh, we were building Kickers website with frames. Tell us about it. Tell us about it. Let's see, uh, frames, well, you can see the, the doc type changed a little bit. We use the frame set, DTD now, and uh, we added a little title, so visitors know what they can expect. Uh, next, you see the frame set. Uh, yeah, I'll, it'll, be, uh, uh, it'll all become clear later. Uh, frames are really cool, and except for a few minor problems with Printing, navigating, scrollings, and sometimes Alta Vista and Likers wouldn't understand it, but otherwise it was pretty cool. Uh, here you can see we add three files, uh, the navigation, uh, oh, it should be a header, oh, I made a little mistake. Uh, okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, a navigation and a home, and uh, what does it look like? Well, it looks something like this. This is what we have until now. This is what our website's gonna look like. Back to you. Okay, some serious stuff again. Uh, ten years before 1999, um, this man here called Tim Berners-Lee, you all know him, he invented the World Wide Web, and uh, his, his, um, um, his vision on the web was that it was, um, uh, it should be open, free, decentralized. And um, it actually felt um, free for us. Um, we could build whatever we want and place it for everyone to see. Um, you, you could judge if everybody wanted to see what you would build, but we could do it. We felt cool. Um, another key concept of the World Wide Web is uh, that it's decentralized, so there's no single uh, entity with single control. So that, that's uh, really something he thought of. Um, today we have big, well, quite a big, large, large number of big companies ruling the web. So that's not entirely his vision of what the web should look, look like. He also came up with the uh, web standards. He actually founded the World Wide Web Consortium, overseeing the long-term growth of the web. And uh, they, they do so by de de developing these, uh, these web standards for compatibility, accessibility, security, etc. And of course, they developed uh, HTML as well. So HTML as we use it today, it was already done back in the days, in the uh, yeah, beginning of 1990. Um, what we also saw with the growing popularity in the browsers to be the door to the World Wide Web, uh, that Netscape and Internet Explorer were fighting to become the number one browser. Um, uh, the good thing is, these, this browser war, it helps forming the web standards, so it emphasized the need for consistency between those browsers. And some people uh, might be nostalgic about uh, Netscape, which, which was quite a popular browser back in the day, and we hated Internet Explorer, of course, but it's in Netscape that introduced cookies, I found out. And after some time, um, um, Internet Explorer won this war, uh, and soon Firefox came into prominence, and Chrome, um, uh, uh, and, and the new war started. Okay, uh, then what happened, uh, what, what we also already saw in the 90s, 
is that um, companies were monetizing the World Wide Web. So um, we had the cookies with Netscape, and um, um, somewhere around 1996, the company introduced the cookie-based uh, tracking. So targeted ads based on your needs were already launched by then. We, we find it quite normal today, and it was already launched by then. Um, and we also saw the first platform of monetizing user-generated content. So, so I write content, and, and, and another company gets the money. Uh, Google AdSense, maybe you know that one, uh, they would come up with targeted ads in your email inbox based on your conversation. So it's kind of freaky, but it, we still think it's kind of normal today uh, that, that, that there are companies um, earning money while the data we provide is by, uh, by us. And the balance seems a bit lost, but, but when looking at the, uh, when the original vision of um, Tim Berners-Lee, and um, of course there are uh, new regulations, there is dialogue on, uh, to reduce the power of the big tech companies, um, and there is even technology that would um, uh, well, well, make sure that we have a decentralized organis uh, organized web. So not a company owning the data, but all of us owning the data, but, but obviously not there yet. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to go back to Walter. He's going to show us how we would build an open, honest, free, decentralized, robust, demonetizing yet very classic platform with um, 1999 technology. So, Walter, okay, go well, ahead. You can remember we had uh, three frames, and now we're going to look uh, have a look at our header frame. Uh, well, again, we start with uh, uh, HTML, uh, and as you can see, it contains a logo. Uh, well, what does it look like? Of course, it looked like this. Pretty cool. We also made this made the page orange. Uh, next on. Uh, I also made it a cool, made a cool image, which we can also add. Looks like this to my mouse friendly place. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Uh, I, I really want uh, the the images to be distributed, one on the left, one on the right, and of course we use tables for that. As you can see, we put one in the left uh, column and the other one in the right column, and then it looks something like this. Well, uh, I'll add another row and uh, we'll inform uh, what our website is, is about. And again, I add a marquee so we get this cool ticker effect. <laughs> and it looks like this. Uh, what we have uh, until now, the complete website looks like this. <laughs> Starting to become something. Back to you, Tom. Yes. Some, uh, some 1999 principles we might revisit, so actually learn from 1999. I think we can be very um, happy that it's 2024 and not 1999, but there are some, some basic stuff that can be um, worth uh, uh, revisiting. Um, we had slow connections at the time, so you have to learn how to optimize your web pages and all the assets, like the images. And I, at the time, learned a lot about image compression and um, when to use what type of image in what situation. Um, or achieving more with less code because of, um, well, today because of the speedy connections, we sometimes do not bother enough, enough uh, about performance optimization. And you might also overlook unnecessary mistakes in your code. So I think it's a, it's a good thing to fully understand what you are building and build lightweight from scratch. And it was important back then, and it still is important now. Um, you also had to code by hand, and um, yes, you had to write all the code yourself. Uh, you would write complete HTML pages, CSS or PHP, JavaScript. And um, um, while we have the tools right now, um, I think the, the hand coding really uh, um, enhanced my problem solving skills. I think. Today, still, uh, I achieve more with with the, with the knowledge by hand because of uh, well, all the hand codes in the early days. Um, also, because of the slow connections, um, you were sometimes forced to use all your creativity to be simple. And of course, I'm not talking about table frames-based websites. Uh, 
they were a disaster, I'm sorry about it. Um, but straightforward HTML, uh, semantics, uh, following the web standards, it, it still is the key to accessible content. And simple websites uh, are better for everyone, we think. And one of the most intentional, the simpler, more text-based uh, designs made in the early days were also more accessible than some websites today. Um, the book you see right here, it's uh, of a person called Jacob Nielsen, it's written in 1999, and you also can see his website, he thought, well, it's a very useful website, it is fast, it's accessible, uh, but we can also say it's terrible ugly. I'm going to give it back to Walter, because I'm going to chat a little bit about micro-animations, so, Walter. Yes, yeah, as you uh, saw before, we already had uh, a couple of uh, micro animations in the form of the marquee tool, marquee tag, uh, but we're going to add some more. So uh, we, c we start with our home page now. Uh, again, a simple HTML uh, page with the same background, so it's with, with all the sparkles and stuff. And again, we're going to center it because everything needs to be centered. Uh, we're going to inform our users what our website is about, a fragile-tastic website, and, uh, well, it looks like this. It's pretty awesome as a, as a start, starting point. We're going to add some more stuff. It's a, it's a little bit uh, boring, so we're going to add some blink to it. Yes. It's, it's, it's a really, they should have called it blink instead of blink, if you ask me. Look at it blink. <laughs> Yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, to declare uh, our love for our cave-dwelling friends, uh, we're going to add uh, some text, and we're going to yeah, well, mix different fonts, <laughs> different sizes, and different colors. And also, at, at the bottom, you see you need to view this website on Netscape Navigator. With a re resolution of 800 by, yeah, you can see, but it's 600. It's a pretty large uh, monitor. Looks like this. Awesome, right? Uh, what, what would really be fun is uh, I found this animation of a baby, and we're going to add that. And also, below you see a head counter. So, it looks like this. <laughs> you see the baby is dancing. Pretty cool. And the completed website looks like this. I also added a flamey welcome uh, image. So what do you think of it this far? <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. It's quite cool, man. Yeah. Okay, here we have a... Oh, I see we go back to theory again. Okay. Oh, oh, the boring okay. stuff. Yeah, yeah. The boring yeah. stuff. I will tell you a little bit. Um, let's give some um, uh, uh, 20, 24 advice to uh, our 1999 selves. I, uh, on his side, I would say embrace these web standards. So, um, well... When we would have embraced the web standards, we wouldn't have all these frames and all this stuff that would make it difficult to index your website or use your website. Um, but 1999, Raoul told say yes. They are reporting these web standards, but our browser doesn't support it. And it's, it's true. Um, um, a lot of these browsers back in the days, um, there simply weren't any rules, so um, um, browsers didn't have any requirements uh, how to build your site, so you had to actually build your website to make sure it worked in every browser and build all kinds of hacks. Nowadays, you can pretty much rely on the web standards to make sure it will deliver the, the, the right um, uh, viewing on your browser, and when it does not, of course, it's not your fault, it's the browser's fault. In the 90s, you would make uh, the website fit in the browser of your choice, which is a shame. You saw it in the, uh, in the screen. Uh, we say, view this with Netscape Navigator. Uh, in the end, web standards foster the rules in order to have a free and open internet. So, something simple as the browser of your choice is a free choice, right? Uh, some more advice then. Uh, use responsive design. Yes, I know we didn't have any real good smartphones and stuff, but we had different size screens. But Bart and Tom say, no, this will not be pixel perfect. And, well, I, I will explain about it. 
Um, in the um, 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 in, in 1999, we designers, in, in our case, uh, often designed websites with a print canvas in mind. So they would print out uh, the design, present it to the customer, the customer would love it, and of course, um, uh, expected it to turn out that way when you would finally build it. But of course, that didn't happen. Um, you see in the screen below, lots of white space. Uh, because you had to find compromises to make it fit in the screen, because you had to build these pixel perfect, so the, the, the 800 and, uh, uh, pixels are uh, sometimes a bit bigger, but you, know, you ended up in all these kind of compromises. And in the end, the customer wasn't really happy. Um, so more advice. Um, Yes, there are already were these web content accessibility guidelines, so accessibility matters. But 1999, uh, Tom and Martha say, look at yourself. In 2024, we still don't follow, really follow that good, the, the um, accessibility guidelines. Um, but we had it in uh, 1999. Um, it turned 25 last month, uh, and I, I think it's kind of depressing that a lot of sites um, are not com compliant to this very day. We, you, your, your client really has to say to you, okay, make it compliant, and then maybe you have enough time to do so, but it's hard. And the government is still telling us, you should make your website accessible. Um, okay, the last advice then. Um, just use a, set, use a standard approach. When you look at website through the glasses of uh, the user, instead of the techie approach, like uh, I have something great, let's implement it right now, um, then uh, you would have a better website. But okay, 99.9 rather than Tom say, you're right, you're right, we totally agree. What you would see in 99.9 a lot was these kind of things. Um, Splash screens with, with, with a late skip intro, uh, which was uh, very much used. When the skip intro link en ended up in your uh, statistics, um, well, people were really trying to tell you something. And um, we also saw, uh, saw that, that Flash, Micromedia Flash, the plugin was really, yeah, it, it was graphically mind blowing in these days. And uh, some developers thought it might. It might be a good, good, uh, good idea to create a full flash-based website. I saw a few of them in the time and they disappeared really quick because it really ignored the user experience. Um, uh, for instance, not having the plugin, so no website. <laughs> um, and pop-up windows, I don't think I should go there. They were a complete disaster. So I'm going to ask Walter to tell us how we can do better. Follow me. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, uh, first, let's get some scary stuff out of the way. Uh, our small furry friends have nemesis. They are called the Gorgs. Maybe you've heard of them. They're pretty... Uh, uh. And we'll add some images, as you can see, and their names. And then we have something like this. Ah, pretty cool. Uh, maybe we can link one of the images to a larger image. Well, larger image is actually actually the same image, but we just scaled it down for this page. So, uh, it looks like this, and then you click on it, and then you get a bigger picture. Yeah, there he is. <coughs> Pretty cool. Uh, another thing, uh, we also have an, a nemesis, and it's called the HTML. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, nowadays, people call it JavaScript, and this particular script comes from a website, and it's from Dynamic Drive. That's where we used to get uh, scripts, so not uh, from GitHub or something. It wasn't there. Uh, we we just picked it from some website, or sometimes even from a magazine, which came with CDs. I don't know if you know of CDs, and there was was scripts and stuff on it. So uh, this one is a, a mouse pointer, and uh, well. It looks something like this. You see, it's one of, the, one of those little guys. And if we uh, view our completed website, well, then it looks something like this. It's starting to become something. Back to you, Tom. Yeah, he told us about um, what, what way to you get your information. So these websites were kind of popular back then. I learned a lot from WebMobi. 
on the far right. Um, I, I think it still exists. I don't know. Uh, no. Web Argon, maybe. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Uh, there were lots of scripts, just I, I learned from it. Um, a dynamic drive for the DHTML, dynamic HTML, which, were, which of course was just JavaScript. And uh, hot scripts, uh, offering all kinds of scripts, PHP of course, also Perl, CGI, you know it. So it's, uh, it was kind of neat. So uh, when you want to figure out uh, um, uh, some real cool stuff, dive to WebRGIF and Go find these websites, uh, it's far better than Stack Overflow or AI. <laughs> okay, rounded corners. Nowadays it's pretty easy, you just add a, a one or two lines of CSS, corner radius and border, but we didn't have that back then. Uh, so I copied the previous page and, and, and made a page of the, of the fraggles, uh, and it looks like this, but yeah, the fraggles are our friends. So we want the, that to be a nice page. So we'll add, of course, a table. And as you can see, I've added two rows and added some images in the first row and in the second row. And then we have something like this, which is pretty cool, but it would be much cooler if we had rounded corners. <laughs> but how did we do this back in the day? Oh, you all Everybody knows, right? You all Round people know, but I see okay, some people over there who don't know. <laughs> Uh, what we did, we had to make. Yeah, I heard somebody say. Yeah, we had to make nine images for every corner and, and the sides, and it looked like this, and it was awful <laughs> to be honest. And you'd have to add uh, uh, an extra table uh, wrapping your original table, and there you could see top left, top top right, and that's how we made rounded corners. So yeah. Not everything was great back then. Yeah. But what about if you change the color? Yeah, then you'd have a problem. You yeah, have to make yeah, yeah, images. Yeah, yeah. images. So yes. The customer would yes. come and he would say, well, uh, a little bit more shallow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was awful. But the end result is like this, and wow, it's pretty cool. And the completed website until now looks like this. It's, it's given. As you can see, there's a little bit of, 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 of color change, but yeah, I didn't use WebSafe color, so it's, it's a problem. But, uh, also, back then, we had uh, version control, and it worked like this. You made uh, index HTML, and then you wanted to put it in control. You do like index back, <laughs> and then you'd have version control. All jokes aside, we did have a version control concurrent versioning system, CVS. It kind of sucked. It was made by Dutch engineers from the Amsterdam University. Uh, a little bit later, next year, in the year 2000, surf version uh, was released, but we had to wait until 2005 before we had Git. And that was, of course, released by Linus from Linux. Uh, next up, we're going to add some navigation. So we're going to tie it all together and add some navigation. So this is another frame, and as you can see, I've added some links, and what does it look like? Uh, it looks like this, uh, it, can you see? Yes, you can see now. Oh, this, of course, isn't, doesn't cut it, uh, and we'll add a table, of course. <laughs> Everything is tables back then. I added the cool color, and then it looks like this. Yeah, starting to become something. Uh, I also really wanted to add some uh, buttons to the side of the links. So again, I added another uh, table cell, and in that I added, well, of course, you know, Red Bull. It looks like this. Anybody remembers? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, spacer.gif. Uh, the, the bottom cell, I want a, a big larger. And how did we do it? We added a spacer GIF, which is just a one by one pixel transparent GIF image. And we can resize it as big as we want. As you can see, I made it 100 pixels high. So we could make this. And it worked across browser, right? Yeah, it worked everywhere. It was great. Okay, now that we have uh, a dedicated space, we can add one of the most important bits an instruction on which browser and which resolution you need to view our work. 
800 by 600 in Netscape, Netscape Navigator. <laughs> okay, we're almost done. Uh, there's just one thing left. Uh, before pingbacks, we had this great feature called web rings. Anybody remember web rings? Yes. Oh, <laughs> you're not really that old. Uh, by adding a CGI script and some navigation, as you can see, previous site, next site, uh, you can uh, jump to uh, like-minded websites, and maybe you can try adding a CGI script for yourself sometime to your website. We couldn't get it to work. It's always, uh, always a problem. What does it look like? It looks like this. And the completed website looks like this. Pretty really awesome. Well, it was, of course, a nice trip down memory, memory lane. What are you laughing about? <laughs> uh, well, all this talk about uh, tables for layout and HTML attributes for styling, images for corner effects, you think uh, these are all relics from the past until one day your boss asks you to uh, code this flashy HTML email and suddenly you're coding like it's 1999. Because <laughs> all that stuff only works with, with emails and you can't use CSS for your emails, so you're up to this then. Uh, there's just one thing left, I think. I think so, I, I, I will... Uh... Oh yeah, of course, of course. We have to put the website online. Can you, uh, you can do it. I can do it, can I push the button? Yes. Um, we're gonna put the thing online, we used an... Um, we would use an FTP program, right? It's file transfer protocol, and uh, well, this works. It simply works. Uh, we're going to push the button now, and we're going to put the website online. Yeah, yeah, I think we succeeded. Yes, the website is live. Yay! Yay. <laughs> any, question, any questions so far? Any questions so far? No. We, we are secure. Oh, yeah, we have a question. Okay, yeah. What's the link to the website? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, yeah, the uh, yeah, HTTP double point slash slash geocities.com slash thousand and some slash till the fraggles uh, yeah. move. Five digits. <laughs> uh, of course, um, uh, um, we would like to, to make sure we can uh, enhance this website uh, uh, more. Next year, we're going to build a, a, a CMS. And we know this guy from Belgium, he's here today. Uh, in 1999, this time that was working hard on what would become the Drupal Content Management System open sourcing in the 2001. He told us this morning, and uh, well, it would be great if you could manage your website without all this knowledge, uh, which uh, uh, might, might be interesting to you. Yeah. Um, that's it for today, uh, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, maybe no, some real no. questions. No. We, we do know a lot, you know. Then I thank you for the uh, attention here. Goodbye.